And now I invite Sri Kanji. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, uh, that's a great, that's a long introduction, of course. And I'm standing at the most complicated spot today. I'm, I'm sure Swamiji might remember last year when he spoke to me and asked me to come to London Forum, but I denied. So he, he's now taking an advantage. He put me in a complicated spot tonight. And uh, between two giants over here on the stage, and really I respect them uh, from the uh, bottom of, my, uh, of the heart. One is a real mentor in business and in entrepreneurship, and another one is our uh, beloved professor. So I'm not sure what would I speak after a phenomenal presentation by Mr. Mohan and Kotari. Swamiji and Bala and all the, uh, these guys were, were asking to give some inspiration and courage to you all. But I'm not sure, but let's try. Because entrepreneur's life is always a roller coaster. Especially my career has been a big roller coaster. When the world says I can do nothing, I reply the world, I look at the world and say I can do anything. <laughs> with that, with that, let me try to give you some courage and inspiration before the dinner. Uh, of course, delicious food might be waiting for you. So it's a real honor to address this distinguished gathering. And I really thank Swamiji and his team for giving me this opportunity. What a privilege to be among this uh, illustrious group of people who are seasoned entrepreneurs, corporate leaders, and change makers who would help shape India and the United States in the near future to come. It was a humbling experience over the last these two days, meeting each one of you and learning a lot from all of your experiences. And today, based on the incredible discussions I had with you, I simply want to answer three questions. Why am I in India? How do we do things very differently? And how you can be a part of our journey? Let me tell you, my friends, America has given me a big launch pad in life. And when the educational system in India rejected because of my disability, uh, MIT welcomed me with open arms. And I'll always remain grateful to them. Most of you ask me, having gotten this noble uh, golden opportunity, uh, why am I not you know, settled down in the United States? That's a valid question, of course. Um, because the real reason is that I want to change the world around me in India. <laughs> America is an incredible place to live in. But the problems are largely first world problems. If you see how politicians spend their time here, they're busy arguing whether our planet is 4 billion years old or 7,000 years old. <laughs> are, are even busy debating what point of photos becomes a human being. But I mean, I'm sure it must be nice to have luxury to debate on such things. Um, uh, but back in India, we are working, we are figuring it out, we are figuring out how to stop people from using roadside as a toilet. Trying to solve the problem of the poorest of the poor from having their meager subsidy money stolen by the politicians. Trying to find uh, how to provide skills for the 90% of Indians who are self-employed are in low end jobs. We have big problems to solve and it is my generation that need to solve them. And this is why I went back home. I also feel Sanatana Dharma is the most stable and peaceful way for humanity to progress, uh, progress spiritually as well as materially respecting our planet and the natural resources. I went back home to Bharat, the civilization that has given Sanatana Dharma to the world. I see why most of you moved back to the US back in those days. Even my friend Ravi tells me, back when he finished in his high school in 1989, 
he went to US because there were no opportunities for middle class people in India. And I'm sure most of you might have come from the middle class backgrounds and you might have felt the same. But the good news is things are very different now. The, if, you are brave, uh, if you are willing to brave the bureaucratic hassles, India today is a land of opportunities like the United States. Look at, this, uh, look at it this way. Our India will grow at 8% a year for the next 25 years. Assuming that all this growth is in the cities, our cities will grow at 15 to 25% a year in terms of GDP. In other words, you will become rich in India by just showing up or starting any business. <laughs> of course, as long as you're willing to tackle the bureaucrats. If you're not willing to do so, you can invest on us because we are already doing it. <laughs> By the way, we do things very differently in India. When I started my company in uh, 2013, until my board gave me a raise six months ago, my salary was about 8,000 a month for the first three years. That's about $120. That, that's uh, pocket money here for your kids, right? But I do think one cannot create something by sitting in the lap of luxury. In fact, research shows our brains are hardwired to produce our best efforts only when there is a hardship. Of course, of course, you might be wondering how to create hardship, right? We can create hardship for each one of us by simply setting a higher goal for all of us. And I face so much of hardship in my life that it has become an addiction for me, actually. <laughs> but I also think if your response to challenges is to say, bring it on, and I'm sure the world will conspire to help you succeed in all your ideas. I I spent more, I mean, I grew up in a very rural, um, lower middle class agriculture family. Um, as itself is not enough, God actually gave me another challenge of spending this entire lifetime without the privilege of eyesight. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the eyesight, not the eye vision, because most people often get confused. And I wish to clarify that vision is for the eye, uh, sight is for the eye and vision is for the mind. And vision, vision can be spiritual and emotional, but sight is just physical. <laughs> but having said that, there are millions of people in my circumstance hidden in the shadows in rural India. But I decided to accept this challenge that God has given to me and decided to fight against the system and break the stigmatic barriers that has thrown up uh, per, uh, persistently uh, by, the, by the stigma and the society. I basically, I, I, I decided to, as a, after a very lonely and uh, challenging childhood, I decided to fight the si educational system in India, who back then said, you know, visually challenged people may not study sciences, so I actually had to fight and win the battle. And I, of course, won up until my intermediate. When IITs, as the intro reads, as when the IITs and Bits Pilanis rejected, when shut their doors on me, I climbed over their head to proceed to the next level and landed at MIT. <laughs> having, a, having achieved this, you, know, you might be wondering why this stupid guy has gone back to India. So I had different plans, of course. I wanted to go back to Bharat and do something to integrate challenged millions of 80 plus millions of challenged people who are secluded from the economic development and economic prosperity. And I wanted to become a, a disruptive entrepreneur. And let me tell you, uh, working for someone else, let alone for the government, is not even in my DNA. And it fills me with total revulsion. And that is why I went back to Bharat. Today, this brings me to an important question that you often ask me. People often tell me, 
hey, you look too young to run a big company. Oh yeah, I look too young because I, I shave soft. <laughs> but of course, as you see, I didn't shave today. Have, having said that, I'm 24, uh, 25 years old, and people often ask me, uh, when do you plan to marry? Uh, big, uh, I, I tell them, look, I'm only 25, but I already, I'm already married three years ago to an invisible wife. That is my passion and my commitment and my vision <laughs> to, to create a fairer and better future for all of us. And, and I, 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 I always tell people, look, I have a child uh, aged three years which is growing at 20% a month since our inception. <laughs> oh, I'm not joking now, I'm serious, you heard it right. We have never missed our growth numbers since, on, uh, since our day one. Uh, we, have, uh, we currently um, hire about 500 people in our 10 manufacturing plants, just crossed over $4 million in sales, and we are poised to take a big leap with our current expansions in, the, in India and in the US, but, but we are still on day one of our growth. I always recollect myself and say, see, hey, look, our tagline could have been, we also employ able-bodied people. <laughs> so, when I looked at a cottage industry in India, I saw a lot of problems, but let me tell you, cottage industry is nothing but a subscale, substandard, low productive enterprise. But if we can't grow, we can't become efficient. But without efficiency and innovation, we fall further behind. And that is why, that is when I decided I'm going to reshape the Indian fragmented cottage packaging industry. And So with that simple insight, we began to employ, to provide mainstream employment opportunities for people with disabilities, but other than that, we are a commercial enterprise, and you can tell me which company is growing at 20%, including unico, top unicorns of India. Uh, be, uh, right, so having done this, we still have a long way to go. As an entrepreneur myself, I had wonderful moments and I had wonderful, uh, I mean, I had roller coaster rides and I have memorable achievements. Achievements in the sense, you might be wondering that I might be telling the story of Ratan Tata being invested in our company, but no, that, of course, it's, an, it's a happy moment for all of us, but other than that, let me share an interesting story with you all. Now, a couple, of, three years ago, I was just driving to my uh, factory in Hyderabad. I heard a loud scream. Being in the manufacturing space, I was startled and very afraid that someone might have gotten hurt or knocked out of a hand or a finger. So I immediately called up my plant manager and inquired the situation. He coolly said, don't you know we have mentally challenged kids in the plant and they always scream every day. So I said, okay, fine, okay. This is, as you know, it's common for them to scream. But three years la later, very recently, this, this same guy walks in with a pretty girl and, uh, with him and a sweet box in the hand. I almost fell out of chair and asked him what is the, what is the reason. He told me I'm getting married. And, you have, uh, and, and, and to my surprise, he also told me, from tomorrow you're going to give my paycheck to this woman and not my father. <laughs> that is the level of transformation and empowerment that, work can, uh, that we are able to bring among people who are, uh, who are otherwise disregarded and left out of the economy. You know, at this point of time, you might be wondering, uh, or feeling jealous, right, how you could be a part of this. Oh, certainly, don't be jealous, by the way. See, if you have the same hunger and, the, and looking for, to give the same work ethic to your kids, send them to India, we will train and help them to uh, succeed on their own. And we, we, are, we, we are creating top-class, eco-friendly products that people should be proud to use, using renewable sources of electricity and utilizing the people who are at the margins of the society. And we, uh, and we are proud uh, to even uh, question you if what all you bought had the uh, environmental 
carbon impact and the carbon footprint embedded in it, don't, do you think the plastic products and packaging solutions will be uh, costlier, I mean, cheaper than the eco-friendly alternatives? I don't think so. There are countries like Germany and Switzerland where the true cost to the environment is reflected in the price of these so-called disposable and packaging products. And there will come a time when America will head in that direction, and when it does, we at Boland will, al will already be there to welcome you all in creating a fairer, cleaner, and a, and a, and a, and a stronger America. Don't think I'm sounding like Trump, by the way. <laughs> Thank you so much, and it's my pleasure being with you all today, and I really appreciate all great presentations uh, from all great people. Thank you. Wow, very impressive, very impressive.